Okay, welcome to the video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to share with you um, how to um, explore a variety of seated postures um, from a somatic perspective. And specifically, we'll, we'll explore uh, Siddhasana and uh, Padmasana, which is called Lotus Pose. And so the um, prerequisite for this is you should be able to sit like this on the floor, cross-legged, sort of a common cross-legged position, and uh, should be able to do both ways. So start out on the floor, and uh, you don't need to be sitting on a bare floor. A little bit of padding is fine, but it, it should be reasonably firm not uh, overly cushiony or uh, you won't have as much stability. So you want to first of all just come to sit and um, just sit in a cross-legged position like I'm sitting in here. Just a sort of regular cross-legged position. And uh, take a moment here to close the eyes and just let the arms rest on the knees, uh, or the hands rest on the knees, uh, if you're able to do so. You can have them palms down or palms up, whichever is more comfortable for you. Close the eyes and just notice the uh, pelvis. So perceive your pelvis, notice both sides of the pelvis and uh, it'd be nice if I had a three-dimensional pelvic uh, model that I could show you to uh, help you understand your own pelvis but instead since I don't have that you can just do your very best to perceive your pelvis so the pelvis uh, actually, why don't we bring the hands to the iliac crest. So find the top of the pelvis, the highest uppermost points of the pelvis on either side at the waist. And just feel those parts of the pelvis. So that's the uppermost part of the pelvis. And then the lowest portion of the pelvis is... Uh, is what's actually resting or should be resting on the floor. And so you want to feel the connection and really integrate in your awareness that sense of the pelvis all the way from the uppermost portion where your, your hands are touching on the iliac crest all the way down to where the pelvis is in contact. I mean, not literally because you got skin and flesh in between, but more or less it's in contact with the floor so you want to feel that integrity feel and perceive all the way from the top of the pelvis to the base of the pelvis and then your pelvis actually if you also could become aware of your pubic bone your pubic bone is also part of the pelvis so you it helps you have a three-dimensional awareness of the pelvis you could even uh, bring your hand to the back and find see if you can find the tailbone back there so the tailbone is the lowermost vertebrae it's the coccyx and uh, it's fused with several other uh, of the lower vertebrae and then those are also fused with the two hemi pelvises so the two side the right and the left side of the pelvis so you can feel the tailbone the coccyx or maybe you can't depending on how much uh, armoring is going on back there and just notice what you feel you might notice the difference between the two sides that's always interesting to notice but see if you can locate uh, with your fingers and at the very least with your awareness where that coccyx is and where the two hemi pelvises fuse together with that and just sort of map the pelvis with your awareness so maybe just bring your fingers see if you can slide your fingers around back there just to kind of get an awareness of the shape and position of the pelvis and maybe give yourself a little massage and help loosen up some of that armoring that's back there because there's definitely some armoring um, 
So why are we doing this? We're doing this because if we don't have awareness of the pelvis uh, and we just allow that all that armoring to remain, then we're not going to have a whole lot of uh, success with comfortable, stable, sustained seated postures. So why? Let's take a step back. Why do we want to even have a, a stable seated posture? Well, um, the traditional reason, the yogic reason, is because it's uh, great for meditation. And the reason for that is because, uh, particularly, so this position here is all right, but it's not. It's not going to give you nearly as much as st stability as one that has some binding. So. If we look at um, this is Siddhasana, and I know I'm not entirely in frame, but we'll get we'll get to it. But you can see the feet are bound. Okay, so there's a binding. So you can see this this foot here is bound. This foot here is bound. They're bound in between the thigh and the um, lower leg. So this gives a very very stable position. So. Uh, that the the lower body can be uh, very relaxed, and then the the upper body can be very vertical, very aligned. The vertebrae can be aligned, and then uh, for meditation, what this means is there's minimal effort involved in remaining vertical remaining upright but uh, there's enough awareness required so that one doesn't fall asleep because the challenge of meditating lying down or at least one of the challenges of meditating lying down is tendency is to fall asleep because the uh, body becomes so relaxed and the mind becomes relaxed and then go to sleep so the seated posture offers uh, deep relaxation, stability, and awakeness. So this is Siddhasana. Uh, and then Padmasana is the is uh, lotus pose like this. And um, also, in, in fact, this one is even more stable because the binding is stronger. Um, some people strongly prefer this. I have mixed feelings about it, but it's partially because I haven't fully, uh, I'm not as even in the hips as I would uh, prefer to be. So anyway, that's just to give you why would we do it. Uh, oh, but why else would we do it? Well, because it, it brings uh, healing to the knees. Very, very wonderful for the knees, for the feet for the hips, for the pelvis, for the lower abdomen. Uh, and it helps us to sit better, to stand better, even to lie down better, so everything becomes better. So that's the main reason why. Okay, so uh, so we're starting cross-legged, just comfortable, well, reasonably comfortable cross-legged position, and we're, we're being aware of the pelvis. So the pelvis, is this magnificent area of our body that when we're standing is actually really a, very close to the core of the of the body in terms of center of gravity and uh, a lot of power passes through the pelvis you've got the uh, psoas the iliac ili iliopsoas the uh, um, the uh, quads and the glutes connect to the pelvis, the rectus abdominis connects to the pelvis, the obliques and transverse abdominis uh, connect to the pelvis. There's uh, a lot of power connecting in and through the pelvis and so um, that's really good except for when the pelvis is stuck and if the pelvis is stuck then we uh, can't really harness that power and we end up feeling frustrated and uh, our 
posture suffers and that feeds into a vicious cycle so that we feel increasingly frustrated and powerless and then we become more frustrated and powerless in our posture which is the vicious cycle so this awareness of the pelvis is crucial because if you just try to use a brute force approach then you will get nowhere except for possibly injuring yourself and and uh, probably not breathing very well so we want to be as aware of the pelvis as possible and then we want to be aware of what our connection what the connection between the lower body and the upper body is in this seated posture so for most people uh, what's happening is there's a lot of chronic tension and armoring in the lower portion of the torso particularly in the abdomen uh, but really all the way around all the way down into the pelvis and so what's happening is a lot of people are kind of collapsed like this and then they feel really uncomfortable so we want to be aware of the pelvis and then we want to be aware that from the pelvis down so the legs and the pelvis should be stable and should be resting so should be supported and and the energy should be moving downward because if we're lifting up then uh, we're working against ourselves we don't really have any reason that we need to do that or what why that benefits us in any way so we want to let everything descend uh, from the lower from the pelvis downward so that that's our base that's our foundation then what we want to do is we want to release in the abdomen so you'll know that the abdomen is released when you can put your fingers in there and it's soft if there's anything that's tender or uh, hard then what that means is you've got this these chronic this chronic armoring in there that's doing this kind of thing to you and that's going to make it really uncomfortable for you so what we want to do actually is you, in most cases we need to help expand the rib cage the waist will actually narrow so that the energy of the upper body is that the upper body is actually moving it's buoyant it's up the lower body is down stable the upper body is it's like growing up like a tree so the from the pal the pelvis and the legs are like the roots they're grounded this portion from the like the spine basically is like the trunk of the tree and it's growing up Okay, so you want to have that sense that the that the spine and the torso is moving up, growing up from that rootedness where the pelvis is that root, that base, that foundation, that stability, and then the spine is growing up. So actually bringing your hands here to the waist and just sort of wrapping them around. So take the, the thumb to the back side, okay? And the other fingers to the front side. If you prefer doing it the other way around, that's okay. Whatever, whatever works for you. But you wanna just gently, just gently squeeze at the base of the ribs. Don't hurt yourself. It's very, very gentle. Everything should be gentle. But just to kind of have more awareness of your own body so most people what's happening is that there are all, there's all this soft tissue between the lower ribs and the iliac crest that gets chronically armored and so we think oh that's a rib but it, it's not the ribs are usually actually higher up than most of us think um, and so you want to just gently gently squeeze Again, don't ever hurt yourself. Let it be so, so gentle. Be err on the side of more, too much gentleness rather than not enough. Okay, and then let yourself breathe. Let the shoulders relax. So 
So when you breathe in this way, you're really wanting to become aware of the, the uh, thoracic diaphragm. And what that means is that if you're squeezing gently here at the base of the ribs, that when you inhale, you want to let the chest and the shoulders relax. So you can watch my hands, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll shut up and you can watch my hands as I breathe, okay? So you can see that this gentle squeezing here and relaxation of the shoulders and the chest means that on the inhalation, the abdomen expands and on the exhalation, the abdomen uh, releases to neutral. It's not a contraction of the abdomen, but it's a release. So it expands and then releases. And that expansion and releases uh, ha happening is an effect of the the contraction and uh, release of the thoracic diaphragm. You can also you could also if you can angle your hands your fingers up ever so slightly like this. That will give you a, uh, also a a nice. Uh, it's it's I think that's it's nicer in some ways because it's bring it brings your more of your awareness to the thoracic diaphragm so the thoracic diaphragm uh, you can you can see okay I'm sucking my belly you can see the the ribs here so the thoracic diaphragm uh, comes all the way it it's connects in here to the xiphoid process get my self out of the way xiphoid process and then uh, it follows along the, the lower ribs so you can see it kind of it kind of comes up a little bit here at the center and then downward following the ribs so if you place your hands in that way it will give you a little bit more feedback but whatever you find something that is comfortable uh, that works for you and the idea here is that you want to start to become more aware of that thoracic diaphragm so that you can breathe with the diaphragm so that your abdomen can release your chest can expand and release it should expand and release so it's not you're not trying it's a softening and expansion because the abdomen is softening so that the spine can grow upward the pelvis is stable the legs are releasing downward so that there's a stability in the base okay so now next step um, next step is we're going to explore next step is we're going to explore uh siddhasana okay so siddhasana um, I'll, I'll I'll show you how to do it the way that Iyengar describes. Uh, so that doesn't have to be the only way, but it's the way that uh, Iyengar describes. So I know that I'm not completely in my whole body's not in frame, but this is the best I can do. So I've got one leg extended. Uh, okay, so in my case, I've got the left leg extended, meaning straight, and it's slightly out to the left and then the right bend the right knee bring the right heel in near the perineum okay you're not sitting on the heel but it's in next to the groin and and the perineum and you want to bring the heel in as close to the perineum as possible and then the toes and the sole of the foot should be touching the 
left thigh in this case. So I've got the left leg extended, right knee bent, right foot is in so that the heel touches the perineum or the groin and the sole of that right foot is touching the left thigh. Okay, so let's just take a moment to to let that find our find our way here find find how to be in this position now if this is challenging for you uh, for a couple of things first of all the full sadasana may be easier for you if you find that you don't, you don't feel balanced here well yeah because it's not a particularly balanced pose it's one side is extended one side is bent so tendency is to not feel as stable but Really, again, allow for the pelvis to be rooted and stable. You can bring your hands into the um, these these inguinal creases here, where the thigh and the torso meet, and sort of just just gently encourage that to release downward as you let the torso come up. Let the lower abdomen be soft. You can put your hand there, just kind of poke around and just encourage a release, softening. Kind of, it's nice sometimes just sort of pull up from the, get your finger in the belly button and just sort of lift up and then release inwardly. Just find what works for you. Okay, so that's one thing. We want to try to get some stability here, but if you don't, um, if you're not yet comfortable with that, let's come back just to the cross-legged position and we'll, we'll do um, a couple of things that can help in the progression, okay? So, um, one thing that we can do um, is let's do some, some circles. So, we're keeping the base stable so the pelvis should be fairly stable but the pelvis the pelvis is going to rock a little bit but we don't want but so what, what we're wanting to do is keep the spine more or less to the best of our ability uh, relaxed yet straight okay so we're not we're not this isn't a, a bend okay we're not bending although bending bending is wonderful but we're not in this particular case we're not bending we're going to keep the spine straight but we're going to just sort of rock that so you can have this image uh, it helps to really have a clear image of what's happening here so we're kind of just making these circles just sort of rocking or wobbling keeping so you can see my legs are pretty still and that's because the pelvis is moving a relatively small amount because the pelvis um, so if you imagine okay from the top of the head the, a line going down through the spine all the way down to the coccyx the tailbone so and remember the tailbone and the and the, the pelvis are fused so that they all have to move together so imagine the pelvis like my hands are the pelvis okay <laughs> and so we're gonna so that pelvis, okay. The pelvis is gonna be it's gonna start out in this neutral vertical position, and then it's gonna just sort of do this. So you can see that where my where that this point here, where the is sort of the center point of the base of the pelvis, it's, it remains kind of where it is. So think of like a top that's spinning and then it starts to wobble. Okay, so we want to do that with the whole spine, including the pelvis. So feel the pelvis and the spine all moving as one relaxed, supple unit, like a top beginning to wobble in this circle and move in one direction, you know, clockwise and then go counterclockwise or do clock counterclockwise and then go clockwise. And uh, you can see I'm putting my hands here on the thighs kind of at the inguinal creases to help 
with stability and also because there's so much in there that for many of us it's a lot of these adductors and stuff then the, just that fascia in there gets really locked up and so having the hands there helps to uh, bring more awareness so that then we can if we bring internal awareness and intention we can soften and release and you should notice the tissue actually shifting its position and its uh, state it should be softening lengthening loosening becoming more supple you should feel actually feel that under your fingers you should feel the change in the tissue state if you're really doing this with awareness Okay, so what is this doing? This is helping to open up the the groin. It's helping to open up the hips. It's helping to um, open all this up so that we can try again. So let's bring the left leg out, extended. Bring the right right foot in so the heel is at the perineum. The sole is touching the left leg, and then we can. We can do that same top motion here in this position. So it's going to be a little bit different because this, for many of us, the hamstrings are somewhat tight. And so the um, tendency is for the, we're not going to have as easy of a time going to the left as to the right for most of us, although it could be different for each person depending on the various factors but let's just do this do one what one direction and then do the other direction and really have awareness so that you can soften and release in that lower abdomen and in the groin and in the inner thighs so that all of that can really soften and release we really let that abdomen especially this whole the whole thing all the way up to the throat really uh, can release because this rectus abdominis for most of most people is pretty tight and so you really want to just let all of that release it's going to help you to be more vertical more upright more uh, confident more stable okay so then once we've once we've done this now keep this right foot where it is and start to bend the left and bring that in so that now the um, the left heel is in front of the right, but it's on the floor. Now I know, I'm not a hundred percent sure of this because I don't I don't know, but I think this is called sukhasana. Um, and so this is a actually a really nice pose. Now if your hips are not, if your groin and all this isn't open enough, and you can't get the knees down. Um, you could try with something under the knees, okay? I would suggest that for now. Uh, just put some some support under there. You could take a blanket or a towel that's folded or some paperback books or something under the knees so that the knees, so that you can totally surrender into this. Now, if you're, uh, so now, if your knees are not, so let's see if I have a, I don't know, I don't need it, but if you had, if you need to get your, something under your knees, you put something under your knees, and then, um, if that's the, especially if that's the case, then you're going to want to help to release all of this more. So, a couple of things. Um, one is that a um, self-massage is an excellent, uh, excellent, uh, tool to use it will really help you know there so especially if you tend toward drying out so just start you know just feel around feel the tissue state with your fingers and just notice what am i you know ask yourself what am i feeling does this feel supple does this feel healthy does this feel flowing does it feel like you know is all of my skin uh, able to move in a nice way does it do I feel does it seem well lubricated does everything seem or is it seeming like kind of dry sort of stuck just feel around so 
for many people, we haven't gotten that much massage, right? I mean, what, what is it that most people do? Most people, they, you know, they take a shower once a day, but the aim of that is not really so much like uh, to nurture oneself as it is just to like exercise this wrong idea that I'm dirty and I, I need to clean myself. So uh, not a lot of nurturance involved in that. So uh, a lot of people are, are not flowing. There's a lot of stuckness and that's actually in the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. So if you, if you just start to feel in there, you'll start to notice, wow, yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement. Things could really flow better. And when there's greater flow in the subcutaneous tissue, then there's going to be greater flow in the body because, you know, the lymphatic fluid is all under there. There's also the skin is attached through fascia. Um, and then below that, there the muscles are encased in fascia. And if any of that gets stuck or bound up or dry, uh, or thick, in, then there's not going to be good flow, and then there's not going to be uh, good detoxification. There's going to be stuff getting backed up. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be uh, joint issues. There's going to be you know, all kinds of stuff downstream from that. So if we start to free up all of the subcutaneous tissue, then and and nourish the skin, not only not only the subcutaneous tissue but also the skin um, then everything starts to m miraculously work better so i would if you find that this is tight and you notice that the tissue state is somewhat stuck and maybe dry especially underneath the skin um, or a lot of binding in there then uh, especially in that case i would suggest a oil massage on a daily basis so you can help yourself get get a just use a little bit of oil food grade oil i really like sesame oil depending on your constitution um, other oils may work better for you if you already are, tend toward being more kaphic if you understand what that means then um, be aware of that and um, go easy on the oil but especially if it's stuck and and not flowing then nourishing the tissue with a little bit of oil is going to be really helpful and what you want to do in this case if you if this is where the tension is you want to take your clothes off obviously and then you want to bring up put a little bit of oil you don't want to go overboard only enough that's going to be absorbed uh, so start with less you can always add more and you want to just rub that in and use these long strokes and I would say start from the from here and go out like that and then you can come back if you wish okay and you really want to get that all flowing okay if you get this all flowing so the tissue state changes and starts to become more supple you're going to find that the knee starts to release that you get more stability and um, you could do just that for as long as you need that might take you 10 minutes it might take you many days of that before you start to really feel stable and you can let the knees start to come uh, to the floor in a relaxed way you use your intuition and, got, and follow the sensation uh, to know where to massage but be aware that the knees so many people have a lot of uh, tension in the knees and the knees like the pelvis are these any joints okay joints joints are where a lot of things come together okay but so think about the knees the knees have um, all of this they the, so they're where the lower leg and the upper leg come together right and so it's bringing all of everything from the foot and the lower leg together with the thigh and the pelvis so there's there's connection connections from the pelvis directly to the knee connections from the ankle to the knee are there connections directly from the foot to the knee i'm not i'm not sure i'd have to brush up on my anatomy but it's definitely indirectly and so um, the 
if your knees feel uncomfortable, if your knees, if you perceive that your knees are weak, if your knees are uh, popping, oh, then you definitely need more massage, oil massage. If they're popping, you definitely need oil massage on the knees, but the top, the fronts and the backs and the sides, it will be miraculous for you and the feet. So if you can get into this position, you can get your feet. And I would also suggest give yourself a daily foot massage uh, with a little bit of oil. And you, if, you, if you're consistent about that, do the feet, the knees, and you know, this area up here, down, um, you will find that this will all become much more supple and open up a, a great deal more. Um, but the knees, back to the knees, okay, so if, you're, if you have knee issues, popping, pain, discomfort, strain, uh, if you have any insecurity about your knees, if you feel like I'm not, my knees aren't strong, um, then there are many possible recommendations, but just one recommendation is really uh, focus on massage of the knees. So just, you know, Again, take, you take your clothes off. I'm not going to take my clothes off, but you take your clothes off and then use a little bit of oil and just really get in there and get all get all in there. And, and when your knees are really healthy and supple, okay, which they can be, which they absolutely can be, your knees can be healthy and supple, whatever your starting point is. I know so many people have all of these crazy ideas about their knees and, they have all kind, you know, medical imaging and all these things that scare them. Don't be scared. Be confident and assured you can have healthy, supple knees no matter what. You have to just be persistent and you have to learn about yourself. You have to learn about your body through touch, through self-massage on a regular basis. So really feel in there. And so get, you know, become aware there's the patella, the kneecap, and there are things, there's tissue that connects to the kneecap. So become aware of that by touching by massaging and so just massage feel the tissue let that have the intention inwardly that that can release and become supple should all be very soft and 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 feel good and so you'll find that it can release and and um, soften just through touch and intention and then when you add that oil that nourishes and lubricates it really speeds things up and you just get around there so that you can really loosen up around the patella you want that patella to feel free and uh, confident then you want to get the back side of the knee back side of the knee is really really important all of it is important but really get in there and just be curious any discomfort any any uh, ropiness any pulling any tension any hardness just don't uh, assume that it should be that way or that it has to be that way. In fact, it can all become supple and release, and then you will feel wonderful. Uh, it just requires your commitment, your confidence, and uh, faith in the process. And if you do it regularly, and particularly with clarity of intention and awareness of your body and what's possible, and faith that, that you can be healthy, happy, strong, powerful, confident, then you will find that you have very good results much, much faster. Okay, so once you're able to get into this position with your, where your knees uh, don't have any support under them, and you can sit here and you can, you know, do this breathing thing with the hands on the waist like we did in the, in the other posture, and then, uh, and then you can do this, uh, wobbling top move in in Sukhasana. And you can see my my knees move a little bit here when I'm coming forward. That's pretty normal. Okay. So a little bit of movement in the legs is okay, but it, they should be stable when you're able to do this and you feel stable. Now you're ready to explore the next step, which is to uh, go into the um, Siddhasana. So Siddhasana and Sukhas, Su, Sukhasana, <laughs> um, if this is in fact Sukhasana, I don't know, um, are very similar. 
uh, not a huge change. So in, in this case, the right foot, which is the one that's in closest to the perineum, remains where it is. The, the sole of this foot should still be touching the thigh, the left thigh. And I find it's a little helpful to take, in this case, the left hand and just grasp that, uh, the toes of the right foot, okay? And just sort of pull them up a little bit and you'll see why in a moment. And then take the left foot with the right hand and bring that on uh, top of the, 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 I guess we'd say the ankle of the uh, right ankle, okay? And then this creates a lock. So you can see that the, now my right toes, if I get in there, I can kind of pull them out a little bit so you can see, maybe, it's a, I got a sock on, so, but you can maybe see the little lighting is not so good, but there's a, toes are right there, okay? So this is locked in place now. Now we want to bring this foot and we want to lock that one too by just, just bringing the toes, the like three or four of the toes. So the big toes still hanging out here, okay? But the other toes are kind of tucked in between the thigh and the and the calf. And then if you're able to do that, which once you've done all those other steps, you should be able to do this now. Uh, if you have any pain in the knees, then uh, it's up to you what you do about that. I always, always, always encourage being gentle and uh, pain-free as much as possible, but uh, there's a fine line, okay? You get to decide what's pain and what is discomfort, and you get to decide what's too much discomfort. And the way that you can know that is, are you able to be fully present and uh, and have an intention to soften and release and have that intention manifest? If so, then great. If not, you're pushing too much. And what that would mean, if you're pushing too much, you're just going to, it will go nowhere good. It just won't be good. So you have to find that. If there's a little bit of discomfort, but you're able to be present to it and you're able to intend for a release and you're able to actually manifest that, uh, then you know you're on the right track. So for example, how would that, what would that look like? Well, it would mean, for example, like I'm, if I, I don't have any pain or discomfort in my knees here. But if I did, let's say I, I could just gently push down on the knees and then do this, uh, this spinning top move, the wobbling top move. And, and with the intention to release and soften here in the knees, and then I would want to have fairly rapid success with that. I'd want to actually notice that the tissue is lengthening and softening, the knees are relaxing, I'm becoming more comfortable in this posture. So once you're able to sit in this posture, then just take a few moments And close the eyes, feel the stable base, so the pelvis and the legs should be completely stable and released downward so that there's no upward pulling in the groin or in the thighs or in the knees. Everything is released downward from the pelvis down. And then be aware, oh, and what do, you, what do you do with the arms? Sorry, I didn't say that. So you do whatever you want. So some people, there, you know, a variety of things. You could put the hands here. That's, that's an option. Uh, classic, so the way that, uh, the way that uh, Iyengar does it is to place the wrists on the knees so the arms are fairly straight. And you can even broaden the chest a little bit. 
and then um, you just find whatever works for you. Don't do any other if you if don't don't do anything with the fingers. Okay, don't do any unless you're very aware of the. Um, you know, there are a lot of hand mudras that can be used. Uh, don't they all alter the flow of energy? So you don't do anything other than just keeping them open. You can have palms open, uh, palms up, or palms down. Um, both is, either is fine. Palms up is uh, more a classic receiving posture. It also opens up the chest more, which is helpful. So if you're able to have palms up, have palms up. But you can also bring the uh, hands into the lap like this. You can do either way. I Each has significance, but don't worry about it. And you, however you want. You can interlace the fingers. That's acceptable. Place one on top of the other. You could even interlace them like that. And then just close the eyes and be aware of the pelvis and the legs being completely released and stable. So there's no upward pulling movement anywhere in the legs or groin or pelvis. And then Allow the abdomen, including the lower abdomen, to be very soft, so you'll notice it tends to just sort of come in a little bit, probably more than most people are in the habit of, but you're not sucking it in, it's a relaxation, and it just relaxes, and it becomes soft, and it kind of moves inward a little bit. Of course, on the inhalation it expands, and on the exhalation it comes back in. But in general, it's not going. It's not okay. Because if we're if we're put if it's the way that most people are accustomed to is actually tensing up here, and it draw it collapses the front side of the body. So we want to let the torso lift up. The spine is growing up. So be aware of the back side of the body. Let the front side of the body be soft. Let the back side of the body be relaxed, but but at the same time engaged. So it's relaxed, but still active. The back side of the body. And feel the spine growing up, up from the pelvis. The pelvis is its base, and it's reaching upward in the most pleasurable way possible. And let the chin gently relax toward the chest so that the back of the neck gently elongates. You're not pulling anything. Let the forehead relax. Let the tongue relax. Let the throat relax. And just be aware of the natural breath for a few moments. And see how you can allow the breath to flow naturally, unforced, and satisfying, and allow for the body to remain as stable as possible. So that the body, because the tendency is for the torso to collapse forward on the exhalation. So just see that you can allow for the torso to remain comfortably vertical, both for the exhalation and the inhalation so that there's not a lot of movement in the spine. The spine remains supple yet vertical.
aligned upward and there's minimal movement in the back side of the body and the front side of the body being soft and supple can easily expand and release with the natural breath. Let the shoulders be soft and relaxed. Everything can be really relaxed here because everything is growing from that stable base. Let the lower abdomen release. Just be aware. Let the pelvic floor release. And then if you're interested, we can also explore Padmasana. So this is totally optional, but once you've once you you're able to do uh, um, Siddhasana, then you likely can begin to explore uh, Padmasana. So bring the uh, un unbind the feet. Of course, you you want to practice both ways, so you want to uh, become comfortable with both. So you want to switch. You want to do the um, the left foot in closer, and then do the whole the same sequence and then you end up with uh, Siddhasana in this configuration. You want to become comfortable with both. Then once you're comfortable with both then what you can uh, then you're ready to explore Padmasana and I believe there's a art, art it, it is called Art of Padmasana but I don't it's not in I have an Iyengar book and it's not I don't believe in that book. I didn't see it, so I don't know that this is the uh, way that many, most people practice the half lotus. But what I would do is uh, I would come into this sukhasana, and so in this case, I got the left heel into the perineum. The right foot is in front on the floor, and then I would bring the is that right maybe I would maybe I wouldn't do it exactly in that way but because they have to move the foot a little bit but I would uh, bring that uh, left in this case my left foot to the right thigh so that it's able to rest on top of the right thigh and then the right foot I would have and you can't really see it in the frame here but my right foot is on the floor in front of my left knee. So um, this is like, it's sort of like Sukhasana uh, on the right leg. The right leg is like Sukhasana, sort of, it's slightly further out. And then the left leg is in Padmasana. So the knee um, of the the left knee is moving toward the floor but don't ever force anything so here if first of all if you're not able to do this comfortably don't uh, y you get to decide what's comfortable but it, you as long as you're gentle and as long as you uh, have confidence you're not gonna hurt yourself but if you don't have confidence and you're being forceful, you could hurt yourself. Okay, so you want to be gentle and have confidence. Um, when you're gentle, you build your confidence. And so, uh, like, I have sensation that I'm experiencing in the left knee. I would not call it pain. I would maybe call it slight discomfort. But I'm, but I'm, I have confidence that I'm not going to injure myself. And uh, so I don't have to use any force or violence here. I'm just aware of what my limits are. And I know that I'm not pushing my limits at all. And I know my knee is safe. But if you don't have that confidence and you're afraid or uncomfortable to an extreme, then you shouldn't be doing that. And instead, what you want to do is you want to work on um, more massage, OK? 
Okay, so what I would encourage in that case is for most people probably once you've once you're able to do siddhasana, uh, then your the thigh is open enough and the the and and so forth, but probably it's the lower leg and the foot that's going to really be uh, what restricts you here, and that can of course pull on the knee from underneath. So you might experience some sensation in the knee and then all along the lower leg somewhere uh, and then into the foot. So if you're experiencing sensation that's uncomfortable to you in any of those areas, use the self-massage. It will really make a big difference. So again, take your clothes off uh, and then use a little bit of oil. Not so much that it's going to be messy, but enough that it can you can get it into the, it will be absorbed. And that's going to help to nourish and lubricate the tissue so that it can start to release and flow. And wherever there's any, you start, you'll start to know, become more aware of tissue state and how your intention and your movement and your touch and, uh, and nour the nourishment and lubrication of the oil, how all of those things can help to soften and release that. And you should be able to fairly quickly, once you get the hang of it, help all that to release and lengthen and become supple and be freed up and flow and all that and then you'll start to notice that this you're able to do this with confidence now once you're able to do this with confidence um, then you can uh, do the wobbling top And you know, do that. Put your hands on the, put your hands wherever it, it helps you to really have the best experience of this. So probably on the iliac crests or in the inguinal creases will give you a really good positive experience of this move. And uh, and also maybe on the knees to really help to further release the knees. So once you're able to do that, then moving into the full Padmasana is a piece of cake. Um, probably. But maybe uh, you'll find that there's something on the other side that, um, that you... Well, there shouldn't be, because if you're going to do... so. Let me walk you through the full sequence. So you would do this side in half Padmasana, then you would do the other side in half Padmasana. Okay, and once you're able to do both of those, then of course you'll have opened up this this leg and the, and this leg, and then you should be able to um, go into the full. Padmasana. Now, when you go into the full Padmasana, know that both knees do not touch the ground. I know that uh, at least at least the way that Iyengar teaches it, and the way that I am, the way that I know how to do it. So uh, the the top the the how do we say this? One of the knees is going to be up off the floor. It's the one. It's the it's the the lower leg that's on top, that knee will not be on the ground. It will be lifted up. The other one should be on the ground. This one will not. And of course, it will be the other way around when we when we switch. So if I do this way, okay, yeah, then um, now this knee is up off the ground. If there's any um, discomfort in the, because of the pressure on the ankle or the um, sh the uh, wherever this lower the lower leg, again don't don't try to endure it. Be aware of your limits. Uh, if it's if it's only minor, then you can probably use some touch and the spinning top move with awareness to help soften and release that. But if not, then um, just work on that with massage. 
without without the bind. So just you know, un, so like if this one, so I noticed some sensation here in the ankle. So what I would suggest in that case, if it was over, if it was, if you weren't confident, um, and it produced any discomfort and or fear for you, come out of the bind and then work on this with massage until this is freed up enough uh, and then you can explore the bind again. So again, when in Padmasana the, the knee, one of the knees will not be on the ground. Uh, it should be reasonably comfortable. If it's not, then it just means you need to do a little bit more to help loosen and soften uh, something and then uh, so the knees are not equal but the but the buttocks should be equal so both sides of the pelvis should be stable on the floor equally and what else oh and the, the so the knees in this are Obviously, they're slightly angled out, but they shouldn't be, and it should not be exaggerated. So you don't want to have a really wide um, base in in Padmasana. So notice that in Siddhasana, okay, Siddhasana, we have a fairly wide base. But if we tried to, if I tried to. Uh, this is this is this is wrong, okay. But I'm just going to show you. If I try to do something similar in Padmasana, it puts a lot of strain, unnecessary strain, on the ankle joints, and uh, it's just not it's not the way that it's not the way I know to do it. It's not the way that Iyengar teaches it. So I I um, I do it. Uh, the knees are are closer together, slightly. Okay, so let's just talk about a few other things that might be helpful. So one is if you're noticing that you've got a lot of uh, um, it's the only thing I'm gonna I, actually I'm gonna go through just one more thing. If you if you have a lot of um, arm rain and tension in the front of the hips, then what I would suggest is do a lunge. There are a lot of things you could do. But uh, I would say do a lunge. Okay, so put and and then just come forward and use your hand or your hands on the hip and the and the, on the pelvis to really help encourage this to release and do that as a movement now if the if this is uncomfortable on your knee slightly uncomfortable on my knee just use a little bit more padding that will that will uh, release over time it will become more comfortable over time because that that discomfort on the knee is really just because of some tension uh, and but use a little bit more padding at first, and uh, that can help to uh, open up the front of the hips more, and uh, and then maybe you'll have an easier time uh, with the seated posture. All right, so let me know how that goes for you. If I uh, maybe maybe that'll be great for you. Maybe uh, you'll need more tips. So if you run into any um, challenges with that, or if you get stuck with anything, just put a comment below and I will uh, see what I can do to help you overcome those challenges. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.